So what we're going to do, we've signed into our ride with GPS. I rarely use the computer on this. I usually use my iPad to design these routes, but we're going to use the computer this time. This brings us somewhere to North Dakota or Minnesota or something along them lines. Well, I happen to actually know that the area we're looking for is marked pretty well. So we're going to go right here into Winston-Salem area. That green right in there, that's the area that we're riding. And so that was kind of easier to find it that way than to try and pull up a location and search and things like that. Now all of this green lines that you see in through here, that's all bike paths. I guess are bluish green. So what we're going to do is we're going to start right here with our route and we'll run it up to here, run it up to here, we'll bring it across this way, we'll bring it on down to here and at this point we're going to come off of that trail and we're going to go on to the Salem Creek Greenway and we will bring it down to right here then we're going to get on the looks like the peach green or peach tree greenway and we're going to follow it for a ways but you see this is just popping everything right into the map now what we want to do is we want to we'll come out to this road here it looks a little bit more lonely and then we're going to go right back to here And then we're going to go right back and we've now joined up to our greenway again. We'll come out this way. This strollway right here leads you up to Old Salem and so we'll follow this down and we're going to take the strollway here and we're going to follow it up to the end and then we're going to turn around there and we'll come back and we're probably at some point going to shoot in to Old Salem here because Michelle's been wanting to see that and uh, so we'll take her and, and go into Old Salem and I'll add that as a point of interest I'm not exactly sure how you do that on the computer but I've done it on my uh, on my phone or my iPad enough so we'll just add that in at that point we're gonna take the Salem Creek Greenway all the way to the end of it this is where it ends and then we're gonna turn back around right there we're gonna make this a little bit of an out and back trip and we are going to come right back to our car. Now this gives me right at 22 and a half miles. If you look over here, well, we've got an actual cue sheet right here that we can use and it's going to be translated to the phone. It's going to show up on my phone as well and it gives us 14 miles of paved or 7.8 miles of unpaved and uh, uh, so we know what we're going to be riding on uh, we could review all the cues here we could add points of interest and uh, uh, we could split this route up we could reverse this route we could do pretty much anything with it that we wanted to do but what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and save it and we're going to transfer it over to our mobile device and we'll, like I said we're going to save it and we're going to go ride it so let's kind of check out and see how we do that okay so now that we have selected the route or built the route that we're going to do 
we're going to go ahead and pull it up on our mobile device. Now, typically I would pull this up on my phone, but I'm pulling it up on the iPad here just for convenience of, of filming it. But what we're going to do is we got to get there first. So we're going to navigate to the start. That's going to pull up my Google Maps and it's going to go ahead and take me there. So the GPS brought us straight in. No problems with that. That's not to say there wasn't any other problems somewhere though. You've arrived. Okay, so we have made it here. The GPS brought us straight in. And we are going to navigate this ride. So let's get started and we'll check in along the way several times. So we're in here at about four and a half miles so far and uh, my ride with GPS is navigating us just fine. Uh, I've got it set up to where it just keeps you going up the screen you know it turns everything else and so that just makes it a lot easier for me to go ahead and, and read it and uh, so that's been working out pretty well so we're out on peach tree greenway right now uh, so far the uh, navigation has been flawless I'm gonna say if anything I should have uh, researched it a little bit more and put in a few points of interest. There are a beautiful quarry back there. It became a natural preserve after a while. And uh, we stopped and got some pictures of it, some film of it. But uh, this video is, you know, basically a tutorial on the uh, ride with GPS. We might throw a little teaser in there on, on that. One of the things that I have not mentioned on this is we've got a lot of information down here you've got your duration your uh, distance your moving time your battery how much is left your average cadence uh, and you can scroll that over and you've got your elevation and uh, your elevation loss and your total average speed you can also pop it up to here and now you're getting your uh, you've got a, a larger screen of the data that you've got on there so those are all pretty nice to have but you can also pull up in here and you have all your elevations that you've been or you can pull up a cue sheet it's telling you turn sharp right on to Salem Lake Trail at zero miles this is basically your entire cue sheet and you have also got uh, your settings in here where you can adjust your volume to stop your navigation. You can add points of interest in here. So this is, like I say, this is a great app to use. I hope this tutorial is being helpful to so some of you guys. So we are right at 24.9 miles, be 25 miles time we get back to the car. Route is completed. And the navigation was flawless. Every single turn we was able to make with no problems. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go home, we're going to lo load this down, or, or put it down on the iPad or on the computer, and we'll show you what we can do with it from there. We can re repeat this route if we need to, uh, and, and there's a lot of information we can get from it. Now that we've finished the ride, let's go back and take a look at it. And we can pull up, that was the old Salem route. And we can pull everything up and we've got all of our elevations here. This tells you right where we was doing these elevation changes. And you can zoom this in. follow your whole route this was the actual ride this is not the route any longer this is the ride that we actually took and it ended up at 20 25 <clears throat> 25.1 miles um, 
Some other information that we can get is over here on the left side. You got your elevation changes, your maximum grade, your average grade, your moving time, your stop time, your maximum speed, average speed. Uh, you've got your climbs and your descents, and then you can put comments in here, and you can po actually post this for others to go ahead and take a look at. And so there's a lot of stuff that you can do here. Uh, we'll go back to all of our rides here, and uh, now let's we can come back to this, and we can actually repeat any of these rides. But let's say we want to go ahead and, oh, maybe we want to take a 10-mile ride. Well, we can go ahead and say we're going to search for our rides that are between 10 and 18 miles. And then we'll go ahead and this is the rides that have fallen between t uh, or 8 and 18 miles all of these rides right here so if that's how far we wanted to ride that's what we would do if we wanted to take a ride of an average speed we would look at it that way uh, on elevation you know if we wanted to do a ride that was flat we could go ahead and narrow down our rides from that so it's pretty handy to have now if we come back over <clears throat> to our routes here we can do the same thing with our our different routes that we've uh, created here. We can do it on the date that it was created, the date that it was updated, and uh, you know whether or not it has queue sheets and uh, if all the public rides or private rides or friends only. All of these things can be uh, databased so that you can pull up whichever ride you want to have. When I come back to my rides here, if I go to search again, see, we're back to any distance. So once you come out of that, it's uh, going back to its default. Now, one of the things that I did not mention in the planning of the routes here, uh, this was actually a one that we're working on right here. And so we're gonna come up here <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me and let's go ahead and pull some different maps so we'll pull up this map here and we'll put all the bike paths in and let's say we wanted to come down we're going up to this dam right here and we want to follow old falls of the noose road maybe to come back we'll see if we can come back this way so we'll Go ahead and plan that. Now, we can come over to here. We can pull up a satellite map. And we can just zoom right in and take a look at this road. And uh, I'm not so sure that looks so bike friendly. So we might want to take a different route than that. So your satellite pulls up and you can do that. Now, another thing that you can do is just like you can on Google Maps, you can drag and get a street view over and say, well, you know, maybe maybe we couldn't make it. We've got a nice sidewalk here. And so, you know, these are, let's go ahead and pull out of there. These are all things that you can do in the planning stage. And uh, uh, quite frankly, it's what I use anytime we're planning to take a route that anywhere that we are unsure of where we're going to be going. And so we'll just pull this up and we'll create a route and we'll take a look at it. And, uh, you know, if it's too much traffic on that plot, on that spot, well, we'll find a way around that. So with all that being said, I can tell you this is the one app that I use the most as of right now. Uh, I've got a subscription to it. And I believe it's about uh, $20 a year, maybe $50 a year. I forget what it is, but I can tell you it's well worth it. Uh, we use this weekly on different rides that we're going on, and it has never failed me. I have failed it a time or two by not 
doing th- something correct on it, but I've always come back and found out that it was me that made the mess up, not the app. So with that said, I'd encourage everybody to get out there and take a look at these uh, this ride with GPS and see if maybe it's right for you. Now we're also going to be taking a look at some other apps and uh, there's some interesting ones out there that we're kind of exploring right now. So we'll give, keep you updated on that. Until that time, Internet, I can tell you, stay safe, God bless, and keep the wheels rolling. Once again, we're out.